In 2010, Activision published an RPG called Crisis Volume 1. Inspired by Capcom's Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney nine years earlier, the game focuses on the journey of a high-ranking CIA director trying to claw his way to political power in a post-apocalyptic society. Despite having an overall positive reception, it was completely overshadowed by- Yo, that's sick. Let me check it out. I can't believe that you lied to me. You violated my trust. And for that, we're done. Okay, fine. I made all of it up. This is not a video about a video game RPG, but I had to bring you in somehow. Bear with me, please. So, to explain how exciting, engaging, and immersive the greatest RPG of all time is, we first need to start at the beginning, with a club present practically in every high school across the country. Model United Nations. Model United Nations, or just MUN, began as an activity where high school students would gather from all around and simulate the committees of the United Nations. In its most popular form, doing MUN involves weeks of research on an international issue where you're representing a country developing solutions in a committee. You combine with other nations to create blocks, write papers that feature solutions from people in your blocks, merge with other blocks, and finally vote on draft resolutions. This typically occurs in one or four day conferences that for the most part end with the problem being solved. This form of MUN is what's referred to as the General Assembly, or GA style of MUN. It's meant to mimic the governing agencies that make up the real thing. You know, I didn't really do model United Nations in high school, so... Oh wait, I super did. I did GA for three years in high school, and while I liked it overall, there's another style of MUN that is ten times more engaging, fast-paced, and unlike anything you've ever seen in a GA. Crisis Committees. In Crisis Committees, instead of a country, you're representing a real person. And while the committee always begins because of some problem, it rarely ends with the problem getting solved. As opposed to the good intentions of a country's focus in the United Nations, your focus in Crisis is simple. Amass as much political, economic, and social clout as possible before committee ends, whatever the cost. Think long-form improv, but it's in suits and everyone's trying to screw each other over. GAs and crisis committees are also structured differently. GAs can have up to 200 delegates, while crisis committees typically have a max of 25. This means that the actions you take as an individual delegate are more impactful on the outcome of committee as a whole. Another major factor here is that in crisis, your character has both a presence in the room where speeches are going on, and also out of the room where your character could be doing all sorts of things. People called crisis staffers listen to your requests and can decide to approve or deny them and create updates to the ongoing crisis that reflect actions you may have directly taken. I'll give you an example from one of the crisis committees I was involved in. Involved in. What just happened? Okay. It's time. It was the court of Pharaoh Akhenaten in ancient Egypt, and I was playing the role of Prince Tutmos, Akhenaten's older brother. In terms of how to use the empire's wealth, half of the committee was split between prioritizing defenses against a hostile group in the region, and the other half wanted to prioritize moving the existing capital to the newly established religious center of Atenism, a religion that was taking the empire by storm. My character was personally in favor of prioritizing defenses, but had many ties to the religious elite, so using my portfolio power, Hours, I secretly wrote a joint crisis note with the chief of police, who was in the same position I was in, to install cast iron gunpowder bombs at structural weak spots on one of the biggest Otanist temples and hire men to detonate them. After crisis staff read and responded to the note, they made an update in front of the whole committee revealing that one of the pyramids was blown up. I was able to use this update in committee to make a speech about how we needed to prioritize the defense of our nation and ultimately convinced others to move in that direction. In my opinion, these portfolio powers or crisis notes are what make these committees great role-playing games, because unlike video game RPGs, there's few limits to what is and isn't possible. You truly can do 
whatever you want to do. Additionally, the committees themselves are often suited to each delegate's interests. There are historical crisis committees, futuristic crisis committees, joint crisis committees, business crisis committees, and even fantasy crisis committees. Personally, I'm really interested in medicine and entrepreneurship, so I'm running a crisis committee for high schoolers at Wash U focused on Theranos, a scam biotech company at its peak in 2014 in the fall. And I can't wait to see what delegates do to fix, or not fix, the crises that come up. The last thing I love about crisis committees is that while delegates are giving speeches, staffers can burst into the room in costume at any time and deliver an update that further complicates the crisis at hand. The best ones are when individual delegates are affected. They can be investigated, fired, put on trial, or even assassinated. Those are pretty fun to watch. <laughs> Now that you've seen some of the cool stuff that goes on in crisis committees, I hope you get where I'm coming from. There's a little bit of a learning curve with all of the parliamentary lingo, but take it from me, it's definitely worth the experience. Because of how intense these committees often are, they've made me better at public speaking and more able to think quickly on the spot. And given that the majority of you are entering or are currently in college, I highly encourage going to your local MUN club and trying out the greatest RPG of all time. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing. And I'm really glad you decided to spend some time with me learning about the chaos and wonder behind crisis committees.